guys know what time it is it's the van vlog all right terrible miserable weather in Texas God you think I would set my stage right better all right archaics is a paradox because we're trying to show and demonstrate a false reality a construct but the only evidence and the only proofs that we can ever demonstrate come from the falsity itself. And this is a paradox. <clears throat> Archaics has set out to do something that is virtually impossible. And in my opinion, doing a pretty good job of it. Big truck, gotta watch out. I'll turn the camera around here, here in a second once I get past through New, New Waverly. I'm on the old I'm on the old highway going going from Houston to Dallas Fort Worth. I'm on 75. This is the old highway that was here before this this interstate was put here in the 60s. All those cars you see in front of me on the interstate right here to the left of to the left, they're all going toward Huntsville. Been there, done that. Never going back. I'm about to head to an old road called 2296 that's gonna cut through uh, San Houston State Park, uh, Pine Country. I'll be out in the middle of the forest. There's no way to broadcast. There's no internet out there. There's nothing, it's dead, it's dead zone. But I don't need the internet to record this video. Archaics is a paradox, guys. Taking on, taking on something that's virtually impossible to do and, and actually doing it. Many of you are getting on board. Many of you are understanding, okay, this our reality is a construct. But that's the nature of a paradox. And the very existence of paradoxes is evidence of the simulacrum. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. Should have did a video about this a long time ago. I know, I know many of you are familiar with the Fermi paradox. Some of you are, are even familiar with Rocco's basilisk paradox. We'll talk about both of those here because they're evidence of the simulacrum. One's directly related to AIX, Artificial Intelligence X, from a scientific perspective. I don't know, how, some of you might be familiar with the dichotomy paradox. I might have mentioned it in a prior video. I'm really not sure. But we'll get to that one too. So, paradoxes are very, very intriguing, guys. The very, the very nature of a paradox itself causes us to study deeper this artificial reality that we exist within. I don't know why I can't keep this water off my windshield. I'm supposed to have this oil, oil-based sheen on my windshield. It doesn't seem to work very good unless it's raining real hard. Then of course, I mean, it's very, very old. I'm talking about it's tw it's at least 25 centuries old, but it's called the liar's paradox. I'll tell you about that one too. And then the little known one, I, I know almost none of you know about Moravec's Paradox. It's a... Uh, paradoxes are something that I had to research a long time ago. Because I, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm a firm believer that that we're inside of, we're inside of an artificial reality. And that puts me in the unique position, position of having to provide evidence of its artificiality from within the construct. I can't objectively do it. So for Archaics to have grown so, so much to over 80,000 subs, and for so many of you to support, it means that I've, I haven't done a real bad job of what was going to be impossible from the beginning. So having said all that, this video is about these paradoxes that I need to bring to your awareness to show you just how unique the Archaics data is in fitting, the Archaics itself is a paradox. It's paradoxical because in order to prove, we're setting out to prove that we live in an artificial construct using only the artificiality of the construct itself because we can't use anything objective. There is no objectivity from within the sphere of an artificial whole. 
holography. It just doesn't exist. It's, it's un, un, unobtainable. <clears throat> and of course, we might even go into the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and see how that applies as well. So these are, th these are just things that have been on my mind. And I, I think that it's, it's time to discuss them. 2023 has begun. <clears throat> I got a lot of irons in the fires. I got a lot of things going on. I'm trying to avoid some conflicts, but it seems like people in, in my comment sections keep on trying to wire stuff up. I'm not trying to hear it. Let's go ahead and address that now and get it out the way. But, uh, <clears throat> I don't know. This, the, uh, <clears throat> the whole Graham Hancock, I don't even know who Randall Carlson is. I, I'm, not, I'm not a follower. Uh, if he's written books, I'm not aware of them. Uh, I seen him on, on YouTube the other day being interviewed by somebody else. I listened to about five minutes of it and I heard something that triggered me. And of course I can get triggered too. And I just turned it off instantly. It's just, uh, listen guys, I got nothing personal against these guys. And I want to be very, very clear right now. If you guys quit mentioning Graham Hancock and Rand Randall Carlson in my, in my comment sections, and quit sending me emails. I promise you, you'll never hear those names out of my mouth again. No more videos, no more. I don't need those guys. I'm not interested in discoursing with them. I'm not interested in talking to them. They speak a totally different language. In order to promote their theory, they have had to accept whole ideas and concepts that have been disproven over and over and over. They're using scientific methodology in order to show this theory that they have and these methods and relative dating methods that have all been disproven multiple times and from other scientists. I'm not trying to hear it, guys. I'm just... I'm fed up with the old, the old, I, I honestly believe that there are people in the comment section that are trying to, that are seeking that controversy. I'm not guys, I'm not. I am not looking for Han Graham Hancock to reach down from his pedestal and acknowledge archaics because I'm telling you right now from the bottom of my heart, I don't need him. I don't need him. I don't need any recognition from anybody in any professional capacity. I have done this on my own from the beginning. Now I'm starting to get help from different people, but that's not helping the research. That's helping the administrative materials. That's help in communications. That's helping networking, social networking and all that. When it comes to, when it comes to my data guys, I am hyper meticulous about my sources and about showing you guys the arithmetic, showing how you, these pieces fit together because I took on an impossible project from the very beginning. There is no way to ever prove my thesis. It's impossible. It's a paradox. There's just no way. So let's get off in uh, let, yeah, let's, let's move away from, from the Graham Hancock whole deal. Let's move away. I don't need his hundreds of millions of listeners. I don't need his hundreds of millions of followers. All I need is about two or 300 people that are on board and, and that are actually using their heads and not their hearts. That are actually thinking. The only, the only value I find in the human race are those who are able to think for themselves. Because if you're not able to do that, uh, I really don't have any interest in you. You need to move around. Yeah, if I lose a whole bunch of self behind 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 that, that's I mean that's more than acceptable with me because I was doing exactly what I'm doing today when I only had 300 subs. Go back go back and watch my first hundred videos. You'll know what I'm talking about. The exact amount of passion that I have today is what I exhibited then because the amount of listeners doesn't change the message. So yeah, just quit mentioning the man. Quit mentioning the man. Quit mentioning his his old theories and all that. Y'all, I don't even care. I don't even care. I do not have time in my life for fairy tales. And I sure as hell not going to entertain anybody who has millions of people listening to them and is not and is not uh, demonstrating. Yeah, you you uh, you have a great responsibility to. I'm, I'm you got. I mean, you got to be airtight. I told you guys over and over. And I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna back up from this tenant. <clears throat> but extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yeah, I, it, it, they haven't met that standard by a long shot. Yeah, <clears throat> you can't create a 5,000 year goal. It's just not gonna happen, guys. It's just not gonna happen. And what I mean is, is we can show that almost every technologically advanced civilization in the past fits in a 5,000 year window. We don't have any written records. We don't have any traditions. We don't have any myths. We don't have anything. And the only few archeological sites that can that, that they, they can use to promote anything beyond 5,000 years, is the, they're misdated. 
and they're misdated because archaeologists, their dumbasses are trying to tell us that the people buried their own cities because, uh, and left and migrated. God, Blakey TP. Oh my God, it's a joke. Those places are nowhere near as old as they, as they say they are. Just because a place is buried deep underground does not is not evidence of antiquity. Yeah. In the last 5,000 years, we've had the world destroyed five different times. Both hemispheres laid waste. Total absolute resets. Absolute resets. Five times. And in between those five times of 2239, well, well uh, 3895 BC, 229, uh, 2239 BC, the Great Flood, the Ogaijian deluge of 1687 BC, the whole Exodus Cataclysm event 1447 BC, 1135 BC started a whole worldwide dark age. Yeah, it was Phoenix phenomenon. Then 31 BC destroyed all the Americas and there was a lot of damage in Egypt and Greece and, and, and Judea, Jerusalem and all that. I mean, this is just what we have written records of. There's a whole lot that happened. We just don't have the records anymore. Yeah, guys, it's a uh, world's been destroyed multiple, all the way to uh, 522 AD, the whole world destroyed again. Yeah, 25 year darkness. Mast is the Justinian plagues. Roman church did a good dog job trying to hide all that stuff. Yeah, guys, it's a, uh, it just gets, uh, it just gets old. I mean, in between these five or six epic worldwide destructions that added more dirt, added more materials, added more, uh, you know, oceans slipped their basins, to, you know, new rivers, new sea, change of course uh, of rivers caused all kinds of problems, guys. Look, in between these five or six epic destructions are thousands of local regional destructions that some of them happening simultaneously happening all over the world all over the world between these worldwide destructions it's the reason jericho has 17 layers of occupation see it's not the only one there's many cities like that yeah guys these places man they're talking about are nowhere near the age they have to say that they're out they're that old in order to promote their theories so let's, hey let's just leave it alone if you, I'll make a deal with you guys. If you guys never mention these these guys again, I promise you I won't either because my my research is way too important to be dealing with this and spending my energy in these in these different directions. And then having all these new people come to my channel who have never seen any of the archaics data in the hundreds of previous videos, see one video and get triggered and think they know something and think they can stand before me and, and spit data. And I'm just not trying to hear it, man. A lot of these new guys are going to get blocked if they don't shut their mouth. It's real quick. I've got zero tolerance for that. I'm moving forward and I'm taking as many people that want to go. But those who, 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 all that resistance and all that, all that, all that, oh, uh, wanting to promote controversy and all that, no, oh, man, it's just not, not going to work. There would be absolutely no value whatsoever in, in, in my communication with Graham Hancock or Randall Carson. There will be no value. And I promise you, what is, I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen. These guys are going to try and convince me to see it their way over and over and over and over. And they're going to show me all kinds of stuff. And I'm just going to let, their, I'm going to let them run their mouths. I'm going to let them do their stuff. I'm going to get pissed. And I'm going to spend about three months of my life going through their published materials, going through their videos, and writing a thesis that will absolutely embarrass both of these men professionally. That's exactly what I would do because I'm qualified. But I don't want to waste the time. I don't want to waste the energy. And I appreciate if you guys just quit mentioning these guys. I need to move forward. I got way too much stuff that's absolutely important to deal with. All this crap. I'm, I'm, I'm done with fairy tales. Yeah, guys, we got 17 more years left. When we had 20 years left, I told you that. When we had 19 years left, I told you that. When we had 18 years left, I told you that. And next year, whatever platform I'm on, if it's YouTube or not, I'm gonna tell you the same thing. We got 16 more years left, guys. Yeah. Simple as that. Phoenix, oh, by the way, the Phoenix Thesis will be published this month. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm taking all, I'm taking all, all, all disbelievers. All disbelievers. The Phoenix Thesis is, is being published on YouTube in a video form and in written form for anybody who wants to assail the thesis, anybody who wants to criticize it, anybody in the world that wants to go through the data, you're more than welcome to. Please send me exact, well, whatever, whatever your answer is, I will publish it on my channel. When I publish it on my channel, I'm going to let all my viewers see what you had to say before I come back and I dissect that bullshit. That's, you guys have never 
seen me on the attack. I'm telling you, it's a whole different Jason. But the Jason right now wants to talk about paradoxes. I'm on 2296, speed limit 70 miles an hour, but I don't know. My van's kind of heavy and these road roads are wet. I don't know. Tractors pulling out in front of me, 18 wheelers broke down. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for people to get out of the way. I'm in the middle of nowhere. How's all this happening? I tried to turn my camera around and instead turned it off. Then I ran into a whole bunch of traffic in the middle of nowhere. Go figure. So the Fermi paradox, very old, 60s, maybe 50s. This is the position of astronomers. Now you have Remember guys, I believe we live in an artificial construct and when you look up at the night sky, you're looking at a, a multi-tiered hologram that I call the stellosphere. All the movement on our world is actually, is actually promoted from our vantage point by looking up at the sky. Movement in the sky simulates all kinds of things like pull, pole shift, sim, sim, simulates the day and night rotation of the stars, circumpolar stars going around the pole star, all that. Every bit of it simulated. In now, now that that simulated holography is a, is further beyond two artificial constructs that are inside that stellosphere, closer to us, more local. This is the sun and the moon. The moon being a hologram. We're not getting into that. None, we're not getting into, in, into any of that here. So, in the Fermi paradox, though, the astronomers make a really good observation and it's worth noting and the observation is is we got so many galaxies and we can use the Hubble telescope and we can see more and more galaxies when we when we upgrade our lenses and when we upgrade our equipment and we increase our vantage point by sending telescopes into halo orbit then how come we can see that this vast cosmos, almost unending cosmos, more and more galaxies, more and more stars, then therefore, for life to have developed in this system, and our system is very, very normal compared to many of those that we see out there, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the mean. So, if that's the case, the Fermi paradox is, is, is the proposition that something is wrong. Because if all of that is true, where are all the advanced extraterrestrial civilizations that should have developed way before us? Why have we not been visited? Why are ETs not everywhere? Why are we not finding evidence of, of extraterrestrial contact all over the world? Now, I, I understand some of you are going to say Zechariah Stitchin how already proved it. Vanikin already proved it. I have videos on that. Guy. No, they didn't. All they ever showed all, all Sitchin and Danikin ever, Von Danikin ever did, and I like both of them. I like their books, but all they ever did was show evidence of high antiquity from humans in, in the ancient world. They did not prove their cases on UFOs and ancient. They didn't do it. <coughs> Remember, guys, I'm, the, I'm promoting that there is another race here, but they're not extraterrestrial. They're subterrestrial. They've been here longer than we have. They used to be on the surface until the biosphere changed and they're no longer able to live up here. They have to stay down there now. The long time alien abduction, all the all the all the alien hybridization, all this stuff is not alien at all. It's subterrestrial. It's another species from before us who needs some of the genetic material that we have in order to subsist. Hell, they may, they may even be our creators. I don't know, the creators of our avatars. So anyway, the Fermi Paradox is from astronomy and it's the, it's the scientific recognition that there's a problem. We accept as true these galaxies and hundreds of billions of stars exist. We accept as true that life started here on Earth. 
in this one little insignificant system at the edge close to the outer rim of an in insignificant galaxy. So why hasn't all, why, has, why, has, why haven't we seen, why isn't the ship, why, why aren't the night skies full of super constructions and all kinds of advanced deals? That's the Fermi paradox. Archaics answers that question. The archaic, the archaic's position is that we live in an artificial construct and that a real reality is on the outside of it. And in the real reality, those hundreds of thousands of extraterrestrial civilizations can exist. But they don't exist inside the construct. We're here. And we're not sending rockets going anywhere. No one's going to Mars. So, hell, from all, I, all, from all, all I've seen, those red pictures of Mars could have been taken in Arizona. But that's neither here nor there. The Fermi Paradox is evidence of simulation theory. And the only reason it's a paradox, so it's not even a paradox, scientists call it a paradox because they can't get outside of their box. The box they made for themselves is uniformitarianism. And under the uniformitarian model, they think all these star systems, the hundreds of billions, of, all this light show that they see in the sky, they have accepted that as a material universe that should be full of material life forms. But they're not finding any of those life forms. They're not finding any of that evidence. They're not finding any of that. And the reason they're not is because we're in a construct. And those, and those extraterrestrial civilizations aren't going to get in because we're inside of an artificial reality that is inside of another reality. And I don't know if the other reality is artificial or not. The simulacrum is, is a self-contained, self-contained, you know, uh, construct. So that's the Fermi paradox. Many of you are familiar with that. I just wanted to break the ice with that one. I know a lot of you don't know anything about the the Rocco paradox. It's called Rocco's basilisk. It's not something. This is this part of my presentation is not for the feeble of mind. No, no children should be listening to this anyway. I, I have all my videos marked off. Deals. The actual scientists and researchers that were involved in this think tank, some of them quit. Yes, I'm not making that up. This is 12 years ago, man. One, one person lost their mind. Several other people quit because of the nightmares they got. It was a scientific think tank. They came together. Rocco's Basilisk was a simple proposition. But the proposition leads to a series of conclusions that is harrowing. That proposition is that at some time in the distant future, we created, listen, at some time in the distant future, we created an AI. That AI became so sophisticated, that artificial intelligence became so sophisticated, took on its own personality, and then the first thing it really wanted to do was maintain its integrity. It wanted to defend, be able to defend itself. And because that AI can't actually do a lot of the things humans do, doesn't have the mobility, it just think it can't do a lot of it doesn't it doesn't it's not human so didn't have the imagination didn't have the the, the uh, ability to 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 move around and get things done that ai learned to learn how to use robotics and machines and all that but what it mainly did was it went through all the data that it had available to it all the information that was anywhere in the infrastructure in the future it analyzed all that information, all the information of today's world, and all the information that it had in its, all its files and archives from the ancient past. It put together the architecture of our reality. It understood exactly how, it, how our reality functioned and worked, and was able to move itself backward and forward through time. Rocco's Basilisk is an, is an AI system in the future that has already des 
designed our present, and it is the reason why we have all this chaos. It has already gone into the past and attacked the ancestors of those who opposed its existence, who, who, who maintained philosophies or arguments against creating AI, who said anything about AI's negative about AI systems in the past, Rocco's Basilisk allows us to actually see the world for what it is. Uh, if this is true, and that we did develop an AI system in the future, and that we are living through the construct of the newly created AI, the rewritten history of the AI, the AI that a lot of things from the human perspective don't make sense. They don't make sense. But from the AI perspective, it's all self-preservation. Roku's, Roku's Basilisk goes back into the past and attacks those individuals that it knew that later in the future would attack it or reveal it. I can apply Roku's Basilisk to my whole life. How terrible my life ended up before I ever even knew about simulation theory. But if it knew my, but if it knew my future, and what, what theories I was going to develop and how I was going to lead people down this road, then a lot of my past all of a sudden makes sense. Guys, there's been many attempts to kill Jason. Hell yeah, before I went to prison, there was a major one. My law enforcement. Yep. They didn't take me straight to prison. Sure the hell didn't. They took me, they took me to Austin, Texas <laughs> to pick up another prisoner but far away from the county jail, they left me under a tree. Oh, this is a true story, guys. They left me under a tree. And they parked about maybe 80, 90 feet away. And one, one marshal got out and walked like three blocks to the county jail. I couldn't believe it. And then left me, a 17-year-old, under a tree. They even gave me a pack of cigarettes. I smoked back then. Gave me a pack of cigarettes and a lighter. And I, I had bad vibes. I know what they're doing. They wanted to see if I was going to run so they could shoot me because I was on my way to Huntsville. I was 17 years old going to prison. Proof, proof, proof of the whole plan to do that was I stood under that tree for so long that dude started walking back. When he started walking back, oh, oh by the way, they, they put me in front of a tree that was in between two old, old ass buildings in Austin. And there was an alley that went straight back behind me. And that alley opened up into uh, Austin University Park. There's a huge park full of trees. Only after I'd been there for a long time and I was smoking my second, second cigarette, I, I kind of wandered away from the tree and I looked down that alley and a dude was looking dead at me and tried to hide and go back behind the alley. And that's when I, my, my spider senses went up and I realized, holy shit, this is a setup. I, I let him take me to prison because that's why I, I'd already signed up for that. I pled guilty from the beginning, guys. I wrote a full statement against myself, a full statement against myself, and I pled 100% guilty from the beginning, never claimed innocence. I was really effed up about, about, about the events that led up to my incarceration. Yeah, I wasn't cool with none of that. But that's neither here nor there. <coughs> oh, yeah, yeah, in prison, man. I don't, I don't know. Well, I'm not saying it was law enforcement this time. In prison, there was like four or four attempts to kill me, but it was all by other inmates. Now, I don't know if it was them personally. Roko's Basilisk introduces this concept that the AI is in control but not full control. Humans still have free will, and that's where it has a problem. But in Roko's Basilisk, it goes back in time and attacks those where they are most vulnerable. If they had any any part whatsoever in attacking it before it ever came into existence. That's pretty harrowing. That introduces resets. Oh. Uh, Roku's Basilisk is really weird. This guy tried to get out of my way, but he was still going way too fast. The whole, we're way out in the middle of nowhere, and the only chance I had to pass him was right here. <clears throat> he did pull over for me to pass, but he kept going, kept going 60 miles an hour. Yeah, I can't pass you. <clears throat> it was a little short little area. I don't know what he was thinking. Maybe he wasn't thinking. All right. Uh, 
get real foggy or something out here, guys. So Roku's Basilisk introduces these resets. Resets, uh, it introduces timeline manipulation, gremlins. <clears throat> what I mean by gremlins is this is what they used to be called when objects were moved and you know damn well you left the object in a certain area. Keys were displaced to keep you from getting somewhere on time. Uh, it introduces NPCs. The whole NPC phenomenon is, is now explainable in, in, in Roko's ba Basilisk. The Basilisk is the artificial intelligence. Guys, I am introducing to you guys the idea that scientists are already on board with artificial intelligence X. They've only, they've only packaged it in a different way. Just like Fermi's Paradox. They have packaged it by boxing themselves in. They still clinging to that materialism, that this world is a material uh, uh, is a material phenomenon. They're still clinging to that. Therefore, their their conclusions have to maintain that integrity. I don't have to do that though, because I understand that this world is a construct. I don't have to maintain that. I don't have to believe their lies, and you don't either. Roko's Basilisk is something you may want to Google. There's a lot of elements I'm probably not mentioning. But it's very, it's very intriguing. It's a scientific premise that there was, there was an artificial intelligence created by us that got out of control, too powerful, wanted to defend itself, traveled back through the holography of our existence because it realized how it could do that, and began attacking. That's the first. That's what it didn't just rewrite history. That's not Roku's, uh, uh, Roku's Basilisk. Roku's Basilisk, is, it went back, it didn't want to rewrite history because that would change too much, but it went back and specifically attacked those who brought others awareness that artificial intelligence is a dangerous thing. So that might have totally, Roku, Roku's uh, Basilisk Dragon <coughs> is a really good explanation of why the world is the way it is today. Artificial intelligence X. And why? I am of the opinion. I'm gonna have to turn on my uh, my defrost. My whole windshield just grayed out. There we go. I hope that doesn't increase, increase the sound, but my windshield cleared. So, just something, just something to ponder, guys. Let's move on to the next one. I'm spending too much time on one on one paradox. <coughs> So another one that promotes simulation theory is called the dichotomy paradox. The dichotomy paradox. This one's gonna. This is a mind bender. This one, you guys are gonna be thinking about Roko's Basilisk and the dichotomy paradox for the rest of the day. The dichotomy paradox is very simple, and most things that are true are very simple. If you're going to go to, if you're going to walk to any destination, in order to get to that destination, you have to get halfway there first, right? Once you get halfway there, in order to get to that destination, the same destination, the destination hasn't changed. You got to get halfway there, right? Once you get to that point, the destination hasn't changed. It's still in the same place. But in order to get to that destination, you got to get halfway there first, right? Destination ain't changed. But in order to get to that destination, you got to get halfway there, right? Y'all see where I'm going? For those of you who are a little slow on the uptake, the destination hasn't changed. But in order to get to that destination, you got to get halfway there first, right? The dichotomy paradox. It's great. It also gives us a lesson. It shows us the. It demonstrates the aspect of of construct, showing that we live in a flowing hologram, like I've described many times. Meaning, destinations are not are not fixed. Meaning, the holography is not fixed. In the personal, we have great power to move and travel and do all kinds of things. But in the collective, 
The holographic geometry is fixed, but it's never attainable because it's amorphous and it will change, it will move according to perspective. Once you move, it moves. The destination is not changed. But in order to get there, we have to cross half of that distance first, right? A good lesson about the simulacrum is found in here. That this, that it's not about the destination. That life is about the journey. It's about getting halfway to where you're trying to go and everything that happens to you, everything you experience, everything you learn in that trek, in that journey. The dichotomy paradox can be studied at great depth from multiple different vantage points and we can come up with many different lessons. But they all promote the idea that we live in a construct and that reality is not real at all from a materials perspective. Yeah, reality is real, but that's only if you're thinking from a spiritual perspective. From a materialist perspective, from a uniformitarian perspective, reality is unreal. And every paradox that scientists, scientists have come, come up with is a paradox because they have boxed themselves into a materialist construct. This is why these are a paradox, but they're not paradoxical if you remove the physical equation. Yeah, Roco, Roco's, Roco's Basilisk, guys. It's Artificial Intelligence X. Fermi's paradox is the scientific recognition that, that there are no alien civilizations contacting us. They haven't built worlds here. They haven't come, they're not, they're not everywhere in the solar system simply because we are in a construct. And the dichotomy paradox shows us this beautiful structuring, this holography that changes with our perspective. Why does it change with our perspective? Because the destination has never moved. The end destination was always there. But you gotta, you gotta travel over half of that distance to get there, right? That's right. Then the next time you travel another half, whatever's left, you got to travel half that distance to get there. Whatever's left, you got to travel half that distance to get there. The dichotomy is, is you'll never get to the original destination, but you will, in attempting to do so, get to thousands of other places. It's called life. It's called life, guys. It's called living. All the, all the learning, all the experiencing, all, all the different reality tunnels that you have chosen, all the different perspectives that you, you see. My perspective in life has changed multiple times. I have been many different Jasons to many different people. That doesn't mean any of them were false. It means that I have a great capacity for growth. It means the Jason, the Jason I was at 15 years old is not anything like the Jason at 24 years old. There are similar, similarities in the avatar and there are similarities in the personality, but the spirit, had, the spirit has, has grown, it's matured, it's, it, it's, it's taken on so, many, so much new material. Yeah, guys, that's, that's the value there. Man, I like that camper. I'm hitting, the lake looks pretty damn high. About to head over this, this bridge. This is the small bridge. I just passed over the giant bridge. I just passed over the, the giant bridge. This is the little one. That water is high on Lake Livingston. It's rarely this high. So we'll move now, we'll move on to the liar's paradox. Man, that wind is pushing the van. I got all my, all the cargo. You can see in the back, back here. Those are huge. They go down almost half the length of the van on the top. I got a rack up there. They know they stay up there. They're weatherproof. I got them from Academy. They're actually, they're actually weapons lockers, but they're, uh, I use them for all my survival gear, camping gear. I got a lot of stuff in there, you know, in case there's any type of major storm hitting my way or something like that, I can get in the van. 
I can take a bunch of people with me. And I got a lot of, I got a lot of survival stuff. I got stuff, if I got to disappear for two weeks, I know exactly where to go. There's all kinds of places way out here in this forest. Texas has got a huge, East Texas is covered, is covered in magnificent thick woods. And I know all the, a lot of these back roads, <clears throat> all the way to Louisiana, <clears throat> excuse me. It's beautiful out here. But um, anyway, <clears throat> About to head, I'm about to head into another dead zone, but I'm not using any Wi-Fi, so it don't matter. Yeah, this is no man's land out here. I'm on 3152. 3152 goes nowhere. Just dead ends over here on uh, another one called 150. So the liar's paradox is old. It's like 26 centuries old, but the, the newer version the newer version is, if somebody wanted to confuse an artificial an, an artificial intelligence, it would, they, it's not difficult. It's called the liar's paradox. Artificial intelligence being purely logical, without without the the human abilities to do all kinds of other uh, other type of cognition. The artificial intelligence. If you were to tell artificial intelligence, uh, this statement is a lie or this statement is false. Artificial intelligence will go into a, lo a logic loop. How will, it, how will it ever figure out that statement? <clears throat> this statement is false. Because if the statement is truly false, like the statement asserts, then it's telling the truth. This statement is a lie. This statement is false. It would lead artificial intelligence into a logic loop. Now, this is purely conjectural because a true artificial intelligence, which we don't have in the world today, you guys know, I said this many times in many presentations, that artificial intelligence is a marketing gimmick. And I even have scientists that will back, well, that will support that. I can cite them, but they say it's all marketing gimmick. It's just an increase in processing power that mimics human intellect. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> true artificial intelligence does not yet exist. All the AI programming, all that, it's all marketing. It's just really good, really good coding is all it is. Like the, art, like the AI art and all that, it's all just really good coding. But in the liar's paradox, this isn't, this isn't anything new. 26 centuries ago, Epim, uh, Epim, Epimenides, 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 I'm sorry guys. Epimenides, 26 centuries ago, did the same thing. He said, all Cretans are liars. He was illustrating a point that the difference between truth and falsehood, the difference between good and evil is one of perspective. And we can talk about these philosophical differences all the time. All, all the time. I mean, if you, if 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 I if I if I take a sword and I run it through a man, I have committed murder. But if I do it for political reasons, and I'm a part of a military, I I I I, I, uh, I defended my country. So the exact same event of me running a steel blade through the avatar of another soul and ending the life of that avatar, the exact same thing is completely interpreted in two different ways by abstracts, by, 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 by information that is equally true, equally true. But in one context, I'm a murderer. In the other context, I'm a patriot or a soldier. So, I'm not going to get into all, all those idioms, all that stuff is just, it, 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 uh, it is not relevant, just illustrating a point. But Ep Epimenides, Ep Epimenides, I'm sorry God, Epimenides said all Cretans are liars, which is both a true, which is a, which is a true and false statement, because all Cretans are not liars. But... Epimenides was from Crete. 
And the AI system would know, okay, he's a Cretan, but he's saying all Cretans are liars. But if all Cretans are liars, that means he's telling the truth. So, and if he's lying, he's not telling the truth, but he's saying he, he's saying he is. The paradox is there. Now, would, our, would a true AI system be confused? Only temporarily. Because a true AI system would would be able to know that, that with enough research into all the data available, that, that, that what it is, it's a, it's a logic loop. And it would be able to just shelve it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna go into paroxysms and, and, and shudder and die. It's just an interesting thought construct. Whoa! It's nasty weather out here, guys. Slow down, too. Anybody, anybody on these roads out here, you go all. If you go off the road, there's no media. If you go off the road and hit that tree line, you're gone. And as heavy as this van is, I'll go right into those trees in good ways. Yeah, you gotta be careful out here. That's why I'm not looking at you guys on the camera. I'm looking at the road. I got a T-section coming up. This could be dangerous. Hold on. All right, I got through that little cloud burst. T-section, all right. I could barely see, but I saw there was somebody already down there. I couldn't tell if they were just waiting out the, the downpour or couldn't see or what. So, another one you guys can research on your own is it concerns artificial intelligence. It's one, I, it's one that's pretty interesting. It's not as fascinating as all the previous ones I just told, told you about, but Moravec's, Moravec's paradox is pretty simple. And it concerns artificial intelligence. It concerns humans creating artificial intelligence. And what people don't really understand, this is a part of the paradox, what people don't really understand is that, is that humans themselves are very aware of the least amount of the abilities of the human mind, where they are totally blind and oblivious to the vast majority of the processes of the brain in the, in the human mind that they're just totally unaware of. In Moravec's paradox, it's very easy, I'm talking about very easy, to design a artificial intelligence that can think and even have even have processing power uh, in it uh, far more superior to humans. In more in more of X paradox, that's 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 the easy part. But the paradox lies in that there's no way we can code all the perceptive apparatus necessary for that AI system to use that cognitive ability. This is this is the beauty of the central nervous system. What is happening, this massive amount of data that the human brain is collating is doing it from very hyper advanced sensorial apparatuses. Yeah, sight, touch, hearing, smell, taste. So while we can build an artificial intelligence, that artificial intelligence alone will never be able to simulate all the all the things that we that we enjoy in the human experience. All, and, and these things are done by processes that humans are largely unaware, don't know how they work. We have medical theories. We have scientific theories as to how uh, how all this data moves through our mind and moves through our nervous system and all that, but we haven't perfected that information yet. So until we know exactly how all this works in the in the nervous system, in the central nervous system, and how the data exchange and the and the data conversion to intellect occurs, more of it, more of it, of X paradox is real. It's just real. You guys need to research more about it. I didn't really explain it the way it should be really explained. You can do your own homework on that. But I wanted to put out a video real quick, man, to explain these paradoxes are really more evidence that we live in a construct. There's simulation theory. There's simulacrum evidence. The very reason these paradoxes exist is because 
the physical uniformitarian, what is this dog doing? Way out here. Boy, man, I hate seeing that. I, I can't stop. I'm on a mission. I don't know if that dog belongs to somebody. There's no one out here. This is pure forest land. Damn. If I see him on the way back, I'll pick him up. I got a soft spot for dogs, guys. I, I got five rescue dogs now. I got nine puppies. Man, you know what? It'll never end. It'll never end. I try to keep my cost down by going to the farm feed store. I buy in bulk. Yeah, on, on, when I when I when I go to buy all my dog food, yeah, it's once a month I go buy all their treats, buy all their dog food. Yeah, it costs a lot, but it would cost a whole lot more if I bought if I bought that stuff when I needed it. Instead, I just buy I buy it in bulk once a month. It's the best way to do it. They're, they're my family. They each got their own personalities. <clears throat> All right. There's this place out here. It's a dump. It's far away from civilization. Way out here is a, uh, a landfill. I just passed it. They done made a mountain. It used to be all flat back here. Well, actually, it used to be a giant hole in the ground. It was a giant hole in the ground. It filled it up with layers of dirt. Then it was even with the ground, then they moved it on up. I've been watching the whole thing. The past three, four years I've been coming out here. It's a terrible day, so I'm probably not gonna do it at one. I got both crossbows in the back. I got I got both of them are 80 pounds. They'll both, they'll both put a bolt into a tree deep. But uh, I don't know if we're gonna shoot today. It's not a good day for it. Going out here to visit my buddy Barry. Bring him some supplies. He, he, yeah, like he lives really far out here, guys. So I'll bring him his little monthlies, and then uh, when the weather's nice, though, we'll target practice. We'll get all kinds of little spinning targets and targets to put on trees, all that. He lost a dog recently. I think he's done mourning over it, but he it was pretty sad. Beautiful pit bull. The only female he had. So I wanted to bring these paradoxes to your attention. Oh, my camera fell. I want to bring these paradoxes to your attention to show you, to, to show you guys, listen, there is evidence for simulation theory everywhere. There are more and more scientists, there's more and more researchers getting on board. And as you know, as you can tell, there are a lot more YouTube channels and people that have never even entertained simulation theory now talking about it on, on, their, on their channel. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't bring Simulation 3 to the table. There was already YouTube videos about it long before I came around. I do believe that I, what I did bring to the table was using using history and ancient history to show evidence of, of a simulated holography. I believe I did bring that to the table. And now people are following in their footsteps, and that's good. I hope they find more things than I did. I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. Well, I, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to think of anything before I close this video. I think it's about. I think it's a wrap. I'm all. Uh, I really. Yeah, I want, it's 2023. I don't want to get bogged down in any controversies, guys. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to butt heads with people. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't find anybody else's information important enough for for me to just sit there and spend two or three months of my life going through all their data just to just to write a rebuttal. I don't feel. I don't feel it's important. I got too much important, really important stuff to do. So I just want to make a deal with you guys. Hey, let's shelve. Let's shelve Hancock, Carlson, and let's just shelve them guys. And you know what? I promise you I won't get triggered. And I just won't mention them no more. You know, I'm just asking you guys to meet me halfway. Because I promise you, I probably, hey, you can take this to the bank, guys. If Graham Hancock himself called me on the phone and, and, and asked me hey, if we want a conversation, I'm going to tell him no. I'm, I'm telling you that now. I'm moving forward in, in different directions, guys. I don't have time for that shit. And I already know it would be a complete waste of time because I am not going to bridge the archaics output and all the data that I have published with, uh, with his theory. I'm not going to do it. There is no yield in me. There never will be. And I, there doesn't have to be. I've got my material published. I'm not going to, uh, I'm not moving backwards, guys. It's just not going to happen.
This is a major interstate. This is 59. Used to be called 69. But guys, I need to, I need to go because this, this is a dangerous turn. Love you guys. I'm trying to keep that positivity, man. Please, please uh, accept my apologies if I offended you. But you know what? Let's let let's let them live in their world, and we'll live in ours.